Hi, in this screencast we're going to review the osmosis lab where we used a gas pressure sensor to investigate the relationship between water movement and solute concentration with a model that we of a cell that we built with dialysis tubing. So recall that osmosis is just a special kind of diffusion. It is a passive transport mechanism but it's dealing with specifically water molecules, H2O molecules, and they will move from where they are highly concentrated to where they are less concentrated. We need to remember that passive transport, or any transport really, only deals with the concentration gradient that is set up for one particular type of molecule. So when we're talking about osmosis, we're talking about water molecules. If we're talking about the diffusion of salt or sodium chloride, we're only talking about those compounds, those ionic compounds, NaCl. If we're talking about the diffusion of sugar, we're only talking about the sugar molecules and their relative concentrations on either side of a semi-permeable membrane. So we need to know those relative solutions or the relative concentration of the solutions and what those are called. We need to understand the terms hypotonic solution, hyperotonic solution, and no isotonic solution. This is review. Make sure that you understand that water molecules will always move from a hypotonic solution to a hyperotonic solution. They'll always move from where there's more water molecules to where there's less water molecules. So using in this lab the gas pressure sensor we want to measure the rate of the pressure change as the water moves into or out of our model cell. So the, lab, the actual setup for the lab is really important here. It's really key here. First of all we made a cell model again and yours may not have looked exactly like this but here's dialysis tubing which is a semi-permeable membrane. Of course it's not a biological membrane. It's not alive. It doesn't really have much for selective tendencies, but it does have pores in it that are a certain size. And so here it's, it was um, set up with 5% sucrose solution, sugar water, inside of the tube, and then we place that in a distilled water environment in a beaker. Uh, using the gas pressure sensor, we took the tubing here that is obviously attached to one end, which is the gas pressure sensor, and we inserted that into the dialysis tubing with the sugar solution. We put the saran wrap around the outside and then we put this little plastic clamp on the outside to really seal this closed chamber except for access to the gas changer. Seal it pretty tight. Um, one key here, and not every group did this, but was to leave just a small, small area of, uh, of air there. Leave a small air bubble there. That really helps in the, in the collection of the data with a gas pressure sensor. So this setup leads to some questions. Um, first of all, what would you expect water molecules to do? Well, of course, we're going to expect them to move from a higher concentration to a lower concentration, down a concentration gradient. Well, in this setup, where is the water in a higher concentration? Well, if it's 100% water out here, and this is a 5% salt solution, so in other words, it's 95% water, then where would you expect the water molecules to move? What would we expect them to move into the tubing? Can the sucrose move through? No. The sucrose is a huge molecule. C12, H22, O11. It's a disaccharide. Uh, it's a huge molecule. It simply can't fit through the pores in the dialysis tubing. Can H2O? Yes, it could move freely through the pores there. So water molecules are able to move through the tubing. Sucrose cannot. So where would you expect the water to move? So why would it work to have the gas pressure sensor to collect data in this experiment, in this setup? Well, if sucrose molecules can't pass through, and the water molecules can, and remember that water is going to move from a high concentration to a low concentration, then water would move into the tubing from the beaker into the tubing. So the pressure in the tubing should go up. Think about it. All of the sugar molecules that you started with should stay in that tubing. Why? They can't fit 
out. They can't fit through to go back out of the tubing. So they must stay in the tubing. And where's the water molecules going to move? The water molecules are going to move in. So you're actually going to be packing more molecules into that dialysis tubing. And the gas pressure sensor is going to record that as an increase in the gas pressure. So how can we compare the concentrations of the different solutions to each other in their rate of pressure change? If you had a good lab setup, if it was a sound setup with minimal error there, you should have, you should have seen the trend that the greater the sucrose solution concentration, the greater the rate of pressure change. And really what that does is it has to do with the, with the concentration gradient across that semi-permeable membrane. The bigger the difference, the greater the pressure potential and the greater the water potential. And kind of like water, actually water flowing over a dam, the greater the decline that the water is flowing over, the faster rate that it's going to go. A water and a slow decline is not going to flow as fast as water over a dam. So that's kind of analogous to this pressure difference of the water potential and the pressure potential. So a takeaway of this lab activity of, of observing osmosis, it's not all about the pressure sensors that we use, it's about the process of osmosis. And we always want to take a look, like every lab activity that we do in science with our scientific practices that, we are, that we're applying, is to be able to look at the actual results that we got, but just as important to look at what would have been expected and be able to analyze our experiments for any errors that might be made, but make sure we focus on the process. We want to make sure that we understand the process so that we can apply this one, to real life situations, not just on what's happening on a lab table, and two, really to be able to apply what we gained in knowledge to a question that we could very well see down the road on an exam, including the AP exam. I hope this was somewhat helpful to analyze the osmosis lab.